Hi everyone, I hope you guys are all well. As uh, you can tell from when this video is being published, it's not Sunday, it's Monday. Uh, I didn't quite finish reading the book I've been reading this week, uh, yesterday, even though I've spent all weekend reading. Um, so I've actually finished the book this morning on the way to, way to work, so all through my lunch and all the way home I've had nothing to read. So as soon as I finish this video, I'll be going into my next read. But right now I want to talk about the book I have been reading and finished today and that is The Long Song by Andrea Levy. Uh, now this is a book, as you see, this is a tie-in to the BBC drama that was made, it was shown in December 2018, it was over Christmas and I loved the drama. I, I was, um, I just, I've, I fell in love with it, I thought it was wonderful, it was one of the best dramas that they showed over the Christmas period. Uh, it was it was yeah it was wonderful and so I got the the book the tie-in cover because that was the only version that they had in the shop I was in and I have just not had a chance to read it until now so the long song is actually the first uh, Andrew Levy book that I have ever read so I had absolutely no idea what I was going into with regards with writer styles and everything but the fact that it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize as it mentions here. I'm sure I felt I was in safe hands. Uh, she had, um, I think it's six books that she published uh, in total before she passed away, sadly, earlier this year. Uh, so I, I think I may check out some of her other books. But The Long Song is based in Jamaica in 1836, I believe it is. Uh, and it follows a woman called July who is here in the middle. And it follows her from when she is born, she's born right at the beginning of the book, all the way through uh, her life. And the book is written from her perspective of her writing her life story. And so it's very personal. It's uh, written, the, the, the chapters where she is talking about writing the book and everything, and her life, now uh, as you know in in her later life uh is written in first person but the rest of it is written in third person so you have this back and forth you're flipping back and forth throughout and july when she is a child she is taken away from her mother to basically become a, a maid to train as a maid uh for a woman called caroline who has come to Jamaica from England and is absolutely hating it, living there with her brother on his plantation. And she wants to train July to be, be a maid. Um, but she's determined that um, she's codependent, so she needs to have somebody there. So with her brother out all day, she's got nobody to kind of be around. So she basically grabs this little girl, rips her away from her mother and forces her to become a maid. And July, and she actually refers to July as Marguerite. She she doesn't like to acknowledge that she has a real name, as it were, real names, or, you know, she, she has it in her mind. As soon as she sees her, she's Marguerite. I will always call her Marguerite and I'm going to drill this into her and she's going to, to thank me for it, basically. I'm going to be the most wonderful mistress in the world, as it were. And uh, it lumps to when she has grown up and she still works in a household. And July, she's very mischievous. She does things like she steals the buttons off her uh, mistress's dresses. Um, she throws water <laughs> right massive jugs of water over her head when she's in the bath and stuff like this but no matter what she does July just is not able to get out of that house Caroline just clings to her uh, and in the process of, of this book as things go along a gentleman comes to the plantation called um, Mr Goodwin and he it, it, slavery has been abolished but slaves are still you know the free slaves should i say are still working on the plantation and he's very happy that slavery is over and he's come to basically uh, to get the plantation still doing what it needs to do but with um the the free slaves and they know that they they're free to 
go and do what what they what they want to do but they have the opportunity to stay and earn a living and have a home and food and be happy and him coming into between July and Caroline and such and what happens so now so that's the gist of it so knowing the drama first I knew obviously what events were coming but at the same time because it's a drama it's that thing of well they could have changed everything they they could have exaggerated moments and really did other moments teeny tiny thinking that they weren't important and they were or they completely rewritten everything um they could have made a character completely different from what they are in the book so even though I knew the story at the same time I felt I don't know this story because anything could have, have changed turns out BBC did a pretty good job with with adapting this story um they really hit the points on it and adapted it beautifully and I know previously they had adapted one of her other books called Small Islands um which I I completely missed I remember it being advertised I was like oh that looks interesting and then I just never got around to watching it so I don't know if they did very well with that because I don't know that story at all so I gather that they did just the same thing with that drama and it was a really well well respected well um well received critically um drama so uh, you know bbc you did good so if you haven't read this book but you've seen the drama the drama very much hits the tone of the book beautifully uh it, it's adapted beautifully it hits all of the the key areas it's wonderfully acted i absolutely adore um Caroline, who, oh, the actress's name has just fallen out of my head. Oh, I hate it when that happens. I will put it in the description. Um, but she she played Ariana um, in uh, Pillars of the Earth and such. And um, she's just, oh, she's amazing. I, I But she in particular is wonderful in the drama. But to get back to Andrea's words. <laughs> so, yeah, so I went into this as... In a, in a way, a clean slate, because the drama could have done anything with the story. And I was absolutely blown away by, by this. There is the most stunning, stun like I had to sit back and go, wow, like that is how you write a bloody metaphor. My God, the last paragraph of the first chapter she does something she writes something i'm not going to read it because of what i'm about to say that is such and the most amazing metaphor for what happens in this story it is like wow oh she 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 has got such a wonderful technique in this book in that she you can tell she's very very careful with her words and there is so much depth and meaning and weight to those words yet at the same time it's very light because when you think it, it, it kind of the subject of of slavery i think is the same as subjects that are very very hard to talk about such as um the holocaust something like that where as soon as you come across something that's related to it sometimes sometimes you can feel this kind of weight on you um because of the because of the topic the seriousness of the topic and what andrea does so beautifully is that you f you with her choices of words you feel the weights but at the same time she's telling you a story about a life she's shining a light into that i'm not saying that she's um taking a, a very light view of the world of, of this topic and therefore that's really bad because she's being insulting to what actually happens to you know these 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 people who who have been through this that's not the case in the slightest what 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 i mean is is that she is you're able to go through this without that weight on you constantly 
it's reality, it's life, and July is this wonderful light within this world. The things, you know, the mischievous things that she gets up to is wonderful. And Andrea does these amazing things like there's this, that paragraph is an entire chapter, okay? And she does things where she pulls you out and she goes, you know, let's, let's play around with this. And this is the chapter, it says, Reader, I must whisper you a truth. Come, put your ear closer to the page. Lean in a little closer still, for I am moved to speak honestly regarding the last chapter that you've just read. Are you listening, reader? Then let me softly impact you to this fact. That is not the way a white man usually behaved upon the Caribbean island. She does, you can feel July, the, the youthful July is coming out and she's whispering and she's that mischievous nature um, of of words of using that kind of technique to play into this story it takes this very heavy subject and just gives it a bit of a an an up a, a bit of a, a light and i love that i think the the other the other book about slavery that um i have read in like the last decades you know you could say uh which you feel the weight all the time is 12 years a slave now granted that was actually written by someone who went through slavery in, in the 1800s and everything and this is you know a modern writer telling a fictional story so they are completely different i totally recognize that um but if you if you read the tone of um 12 years a slave and then read the tone of something like this they are both very powerful. They are both very obviously respectful to, to um, all those slaves who have suffered, who suffered the most horrific things in their lives. Um, but they're slightly different, and I really respect Andrea for the way that she wrote this book. Uh, I want to read actually another chapter. It's only one and a half pages. But this is a turning kind of point in, in the book because with the abolishment of slavery, there was um, at Christmas, there was this um, slavery kind of revolt, as it were, in, in the Caribbean, in Jamaica. And it, it began the steps, as it were, to the um, abolition of slavery. And then the rest of the book takes over. And this is about um, a ceremony that's happening at Christmas, okay? So here we go. The coffin was borne through Falmouth, high upon the shoulders of six men. July and Molly walked within this procession in the company of black negroes and fair-faced coloreds, the ragged, the corseted, the garnished, the dressy, the gaudy, the gaudy, the haggard, the tattered, and the careworn of the parish. This motley crowd was led in muffled solemnity by a white Baptist minister and his family. At the chapel yard, all came to a stop as the minister raised his pointed finger to the moon, then let out a grave and, st and strident cry of, The hour is at hand, the monster is dying. Some in the congregation fell upon their knees, others mumbled prayers on halted breath, or rocked within the rhythm of a softly sung hymn until suddenly the minister, raising both arms heavenward, shouted, The monster is dead, the negro is free. Although the hour was midnight, the elation that rose from all glowed like a sunrise to light this splendid occasion, as the coffin with the words, Colonial S Slavery died July 31st, 1838, aged 276 years, was lowered into the ground. A joyous breeze blew. It was whipped up from the gasps of cheering that erupted unbounded. When the handcuffs, chains and iron collars were thrown into that long-awaited grave to clatter on top of slavery's ruin, the earth did tremor. For at that moment every slave upon the island did shake off the burden of their bondage as one. As the minister bid that the thanks to Almighty God for this deliverance be raised louder than the trumpets of Jericho, and that and that the hurrah for the new Queen of England who had freed them should shake the buildings in London town, Molly did do the strangest thing. 
she threw her arms around she threw her arms about July and hugged her fiercely. That is so powerful. But you can I've, I hope with that chapter you can see my my example of what I mean in regards to she's chosen her words very specifically and it is a really deep powerful emotional weight bearing moment but because of the way that she's written it, it it's lighter it's easier to to handle but you still feel the weight of the subject and the respect that she is giving to that subject so andrea i i applaud you i i love the way that you you handled this book and it's there's so much stuff that happens in this book and it's only just under 400 pages i think um let me just check Ooh. 395 so yes yeah, so it was just under 400 pages and to have to go through all that happens in this book I have such a, a massive weight of such a story be able to to lighten the load of that subject bring in this absolutely astonishing story and get, I've, uh, I want to say something, but I can't say it because I'm going to give away something in the end. But to to end it the way she did, that was <laughs> that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. And I actually sent a picture of the off the the last page of the last chapter, and then there's an afterword, which is still is part of the the this story, this book that that July has written. And um, I sent her the afterword and she replied back saying, right, I'm crying now. And she hasn't read the book. She knows the drama just as I just as I do, because um, I, I told her about it and she she watched it and absolutely loved it. Um, but she read that and she was like, oh, damn, that's that's wow. And yeah, I've, I felt very emotional on the bus this morning. And I was actually right at the afterward, right when my bus got into town for me to drop me off at work. And I was like, oh God. So I had to run off the bus, find a bench, to sit down to finish it. Um, cause I couldn't go into work until I had finished this book. Um, the characters are beautifully constructed and even, even, even our bad guys, <laughs> the the way that she the complexities I'm trying to I'm being very very careful because this is so easy for me to give away um something that happens in the course of this and I, I really don't want to do that I don't want to spoil it for anyone the way you can I think you can tell with Andrea because she really pulls the rug out from under you near the end she really does um with this um hang on let me just think like six or seven words they're like daggers they are like daggers and i think you can really tell that those words she has constructed that very very carefully but also the way that she constructs that character oh that is that is a lesson on how you establish and develop a character and she she is just wonderful at the way that she chooses words because going back over and looking at that person's um wording throughout it's astonishing. It is absolutely amazing. I think this is one of these books that, if you want to do writing and be a read, uh, be a be a, a novelist, be a, a writer, you really need to read this. You, uh, the use of it, it's almost like on the level, like you know, uh, Agatha Christie. You know how I've spoken about her multiple times on this channel. It's master work it, it it's it's 
astonishing. I can't, oh God, I'm, I'm just babbling now. I can't, because I can't think of the word. It's a masterclass. It really is on how you construct character and use dialogue in the most powerful, powerful way. And the, the dialogue of the afterword was, wow, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And it, it, it's amazing the ending for, in a way, it gives you hope for something. But in a way, it also gives you despair. There is light, there is dark, there's lots of grey in between. But the way that Andrea's constructed this story, it's beautiful. And I will always respect her for writing it. And I'm very, very sad that she's no longer with us. Um, I need, I think I need to read some of her other stories. I really do. Now, to wind up about the drama, as I said, I absolutely loved it. And it was made by the BBC December 2018. It was broadcast. However, it's not available on iPlayer. They never bought it out on DVD, it is not on Netflix, and it is not on YouTube. So I cannot find it anywhere, and it's driving me crazy. Now, BritBox is the new service that BBC is making to, you know, kind of archive, um, and it's kind of like Netflix for their stuff, basically, and have um, a load of uh, stuff, you know, from their archives and, and, and everything. It's a service which is currently available in America and Canada. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be coming here to the UK. I have absolutely no idea if it's going to be on there, but I'm hoping it will be. Um, I gather at the moment what is available in America and Canada is kind of iPlayer stuff because they don't have the iPlayer stuff at all. You, you know, currently what we have here in the UK on iPlayer is what they have got on in BritBox. I think I am not certain of that at all. But at some point it's going to be available BritBox here in the UK. I really hope that this is on it because it's one of the most amazing amazing dramas that BBC have ever done and I'm so gutted that they've never released it they still don't they don't have it available on iPlay they never released it on DVD it is such a shame if you are able to see the long song or you have seen it watch it love it enjoy it I just I, it's wonderful it's so well put together and it captures the tone of the book perfectly so yeah, those are my thoughts on The Long Song by Andrea Levy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Sorry, it was a bit babbly. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can't just, you just can't find the words. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So um, have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. You leave me a comment in the comments box below or give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Entirely up to you. Let me decide. And I will be back with a review of the next book I'm reading, which I can see on my coffee table over there, uh, which is The Hate You Give. I announced it in my announcement video um, previously. And in the meantime, I'll be back with some individual videos soon. All right, guys. Bye.